when we first found Tina, it was uh, literally, when we rolled up and saw her, she was literally as sad as that first photo that we saw, you know, that, that photo that kept us up that night. Literally one of the saddest dogs I've seen in a very, very long time. Just her face alone was saying, you know, give me a hand, help me do something. She was just a bag of bones on a chain that was probably, I think at best two meters long. Skinny all, just a bag of bones, skin and bones. Um, and just the, yeah, the look on her face, it was just heartbreaking. It was really hard to tell what kind of dog she was, to be honest, when first looking at her. It was, yeah, really tricky. It was just in that sort of bad, sad state. So yeah, and as soon as we got on that truck, we basically did a beeline for the vet. Uh, where she got obviously an overall check, got her bloods taken straight away. After 15 minutes, the results came back. They obviously showed that she'd been neglected for a very long time. Obviously, she was massively underweight. So that's when the sort of treatment plan started to get her back on her feet and do what we could to sort of try and bring her back from the brink. But the amazing thing was, as soon as she was off the chain and she knew she was heading away from the house, she perked up a bit in the truck. Her tail started wagging straight away. Oh, you're a big sock face. These lovely people are gonna fix you, look. Just her whole sort of character immediately changed when she realized she might be heading somewhere to like freedom or somewhere nice. It was just, there. Yeah, it was amazing. And then she's just, yeah, gone from strength to strength, really, up until sort of recently when we found that news. We thought something is going on with her, so I took her to the vets and asked for a blood test, and I didn't expect it that bad, I have to say. So when we got the results, the vet said she has kidney failure already um, stage two or three. And um, yeah, so we did some more um, tests with her and um, yeah, the last test um, at the vets uh, was an ultrasound and um, she said that it's definitely um, stage three already. The kidneys do not look good. We have um, one last test with her today. We will check um, the amount of special protein in her urine. Yeah, with this result, we can um, figure out how long she will be with us. I think the thing that strikes me most with Tina is the impact she has on everybody. And when I say everybody, I mean obviously myself when I first saw her, Rod and Jules who were with me, all the volunteers when we were cleaning her up. She just sort of was so at ease and so happy. And even when I posted her online, like the, the reactions to Tina are like 10 times bigger than any other dog. I think it's just something about her, her attitude, her sort of, I know some people say dogs don't smile, but she smiles by her, her very nature. So the moment she was just sort of let off that chain, everything just changed in her life. And I think what she teaches us more than anything is that there's no point looking backwards. Like you couldn't have a more miserable, sadder existence than, than Tina. You couldn't have a life more wasted, but even that, even though she was so sick, even though she nearly died, she comes out of it with so much joy and only looks forward. She only smiles, she only enjoys every second. She wants to basically lap up every bit of attention she can get. And that resonates with people because we all face struggles in our daily lives. We all have knocks, probably not as big as Tina or as extreme, but for her to be able to bounce back like that and, and to, to be so upbeat, I think is what resonates with people. Really, she is a truly special dog. Oh, Tina. Off to the vet. Always, always like this. <laughs> I have to hold her hand the whole drive. Sometimes she also want to come on my lap. Does she like the whole journey like that? The whole journey. She is insisting not to give me the paw. And so, yeah. Trying to drive and keep her safe. <laughs> <laughs> she loves company. She's, um, she just want to be with someone. Don't want to be alone. Want to be comfort. She's not scared of the vet. She's, um, she loves to be there. She loves every, every human and um, she's, um, yeah, she's good. She's a good girl there. <laughs> Even the 
that she didn't get treated really good in her past. She still loves humans over everything. She don't need the dog company, she just want to be with humans and this. For her, 24-7, no break, literally no break. She's just, the way she is, is just special. She yeah, shows, shows so much love and affection, even if she got treated so bad. Tina's favorite thing is uh, to play with her tennis balls. They're all over the land. She will find everywhere one of her balls and then she just, yeah, want to play. Even today when we rolled up, when she comes out with that spring in her step, she's so happy. It's amazing to see, you know what I mean? She literally has improved a hundredfold compared to what she was. Loves a cuddle and from anyone, she's, she's brilliant. So it's, uh, yeah, she's been a, a, a remarkable uh, comeback story. She has, Tina. Sure. Tina definitely do not act as she's sick. Every morning when I when I open her her kennel, she just smiles at me and runs out and want her head scratches and she's just just a happy dog. She it's as she don't know that she's that sick. She's just happy and yeah wants the attention and want to play with her balls all the time. And has Tina got a special place in your heart? since the moment I met her. I'm not gonna lie and say that it hasn't been hard getting bad news about Tina. There have been ups and downs. I mean, even when she first arrived, she nearly died in the first week. I mean, she slept in my bed and she she did nearly die a couple of times during that first week when she, she got massive bloat and we didn't think she was gonna make it. So I was probably have already been in a place where I thought Tina was gonna die. And now to be back there is, yes, it's sad, but I'm taking Tina's approach to it. I'm happy that we get to spend so much time together. I'm happy that we can make the most of Tina's days, that we can give her the, the greatest send off in the history of dogs, that she gets to be surrounded by people who love her that she only knows happiness, that she has endless tennis balls, she has the best nutrition, we are getting her the best vet care, people online are obsessed with her and sending her really nice messages, which I literally am gonna read to her, just to explain that she's more than a dog, she's, she's the embodiment of hope and preciousness of, of life. She teaches us that, you know, you do have to, to live for today. Tina, as she is today, is healthy she doesn't know she's sick she she's the one who's actually got the most energy out of all the dogs she follows us around she plays no matter what happens with tina in the future she's gonna have great support and i'm over the moon that i've met her and that people have been introduced to her and that her life wasn't a waste and that she can really resonate with people around the world and maybe even improve people's lives i think people look at tina and they think god if she can be so positive. Maybe I, I should have a little bit of a positive slant on my life. So Tina's taught me how to love, how to live in the moment and just kill people with kindness. I think that's the things that I take away from Tina and I'm just delighted to have bumped into this wonderful girl.